Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done a video. I wanted to share with you, after quite a few requests, what do I take to the field when I go flying? What do I take for tools? Um, and some people have seen my flight box or my toolbox um, in some of the videos and they've said, you know, what all do you have in there? And the other question was, why do you have so much stuff? So we're going to take a look at my field box and I'll explain some of the things that I like to take with me to the field. Some of the things that have kept me at the field flying all day instead of uh, running home and trying to fix something because I didn't have the part or the tool with me to uh, fix the issue. So let's check it out. So this is just the top of my box. It's a, it's a Plano uh, fishing tackle box. And... This is what it looks like when I open it up. When I, If I went flying today, I went to the field, I needed something, I'd open it up, and this is what it looks like. It's a mess, right? But um, for my Vista electric power glider, I've got extra prop, battery straps, some reinforced tape. Don't really use that too much. Some blender uh, tape for uh, repairing hinges on some planes. And just uh, random parts. A backup servo if somebody needs it. Elastic bands. Um, some foam tack, the electric guy, the foamy guys, you're familiar with that. Um, this is a temp gun. Check the temperature from uh, my ESC, my battery or anything I think is getting hot. Here's another receiver if somebody needs it. You know, I fly, right now I'm flying Futaba pretty much exclusively, but um, spare servos. And then this this is one this is one of the things that you know I tell people you want to take this to the to the field you want to get a little parts box some prop adapters uh, if you get a bad servo extension I always keep I use these clips to uh, when you join a servo lead together or a servo to an extension um, these lock them together keep them from coming apart some people use zip ties some people throw electrical tape on it. With this little box here that I put together. This is just random stuff from <clears throat> different radios. Um, there's some adapters there for Deans to EC3, male and female. Uh, random screws, clevises, servo grommets, some small control horns there, servo horns for high tech. Um, I use a lot of high tech. So, yeah, just random stuff that you you know, that you use on the bench when you're setting your plane up in your shop. Um, you're going to want to have some of these things when you when you go to the field. What You know, you don't want to drive all the way to the field, get set up, you're having a great time, and then some, something stupid happens. Somebody realizes this happened to my friend uh, Jeff. A guy that was just passing by on a motorcycle um, stopped to watch us fly. And the guy, Jeff had taken the canopy off the top of one of his uh, 3D hobby shop planes. He was swapping the battery out. And the guy was just looking inside. He used to fly RC. And he noticed that one of the screws on top of the servo horn that controlled Jeff's elevator, I think it was his elevator, was gone. It was just missing. Jeff was flying all day. He was probably a little uh, worn out. And he was going to throw a battery in and go up for one more flight. And the guy said, hey, you're missing a screw there. Jeff didn't even notice it. And... But the point being is that he was missing a screw and he didn't have any with him. And I think I, th I think some somehow we came up with a screw so that he could fly. Maybe he packed it in for the day. But the point is that he was missing a screw. And thank God somebody noticed it before he went up in the air, uh, lost the plane or worse. But um, having that screw, like if he was just got there and he was setting up the plane and he noticed it and he's like, you know, damn, I don't have any screws with me. I guess I'm going home. You know, you just be prepared, take some extra stuff with you. So we'll go through my box a little bit more. I'll show you some of the other stuff that I have. Um, now a lot of this stuff I don't use very often, if at all, at the field. But this is the box that I keep on my bench when I'm setting up a plane. This is the box that I reach for. And then I also have a box um, over here. I'll show you that real quick. The lighting sucks under here, but this is just like random stuff. ESCs, servo extensions, um, spare parts, stuff for my airbrush. There's my airbrush there. Some more extensions. Um, haven't been in here in a while. Prop balancer, <laughs> an old pitch gauge from my helicopter days. Soldering, uh, there's a soldering gun in here. Uh, 
soldering iron um, pins for when I build. I build for kits a lot. Just random stuff, but this is just kind of like stuff that I use when I'm building planes. And then this box over here is what I'm doing, like final assembly setup of a, a foamy or something like that. But so I've got a pair of diagonal cutters here, dikes, wire cutters, whatever you call them. Um, this is a prop wrench used for, this has been around for a long time. I've had this for a long time when I flew Nitro back 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. Um, you know, this would be for tightening up the prop nut, your glow plug, and then it's got these holes drilled here for holding extra glow plugs uh, right there by my thumbnail. I never kept glow plugs in there. They're just too expensive to leave them in there and have them getting knocked around. But a pair of needle nose pliers, different different types of hardware. There's some uh, ball links, uh, push rod keepers, CA hinges. So you're gonna want to keep some CA uh, for those that fly like wood planes. Here's some random servos that I pulled out of something. I think that was out of a Hobby King uh, discus launch glider. There's a single edge razor blade, some different Velcro uh, for holding down batteries and more prop adapters. Some of you may recognize this. It's an old wrench that you used to get in the Tamai RC car and truck kits. That comes in handy. Um, some lead weights if you got to add some, some weight to a plane that's a little tail heavy, a little nose heavy. Um, I suggest that you do most of that at home. Um, but if you have to dial in, you know, tweak the uh, the CG, it's always good to have some stick-on lead weights with it. And then this drawer, you can see, is pretty much uh, battery adapters, charging leads. Um, this is for neutralizing servos, test, you know, testing servos and retracts and stuff. You always want to be able to check your uh, your battery's voltage. Make sure you have one of those. Don't guess. If you don't have one of these, you're flying by the seat of your pants. And you may lose a plane or worse. So, some spare wheels. Loctite. You know, when you get an ARF, a foamy, whatever it is. You know, don't trust the factory. Um, that the factory did everything right. You know, double check things that are critical. Uh, motor mounts. Um, any place there's metal to metal. Um, retracts. You know. Put a little bit of Loctite on there and uh, make sure things don't fall apart. Because if they fall apart, it'll be at the worst possible moment. It could cost you an airplane. And then down here, this is where some of the money is. Um, I've had these for a long time. These are different uh, slot and Phillips head, Phillips head screwdrivers. They're from WIA. Made in Germany. I don't know if they're still made in Germany. They may say designed in Germany, but I believe they're still made in Germany. Um... Quality Phillips heads, Phillips head screwdrivers. This this one is from Tamaya. I've had this for probably 15, 20 years. Um, it fits the Japanese Phillips perfectly. You don't have to worry about camming them out. And then a lot of these came from when I used to race RC cars. Um, these are from Turnigy. The tips on them are great. These are from Team Associated. So. You know, you're going to want to get some, and the sizes that you use the most, what I tell people is if there's a certain size that you reached for the entire time you were putting a plane together or swapping something out, repairing, repairing something, that's the, those are the drivers that you want to get doubles of and keep one at home on the bench and keep one in your box that you take to the field. Sorry about my big hand there. This is also from WIA, made in Germany. This is a magnetizer demagnetizer. So what you do is you take, it's going to be hard for me to do and hold the phone, you take the, um, the tool and you would, hold on one second guys, let me set the camera up a little different, give me a minute, I've got my GoPro that's not working at the moment, it's not set up at the moment or charged, but in, in this hole here, the square hole, you run the driver in a square around the outside of this uh, this here and it magnetizes the tip and then you want to demagnetize you run it through the one that looks like a staircase there you just trace that um, several times with the tip of the with the tool Phillips head um, hex head 
whatever whatever it is that you have, whatever type of driver you have, and you can either magnetize for picking up screws and holding on to them. And if you, for some reason, you don't want to magnetize, you run it through this one, um, and it demagnetizes it. Great tool, not very expensive, probably about ten, twelve dollars. I've had this one for a long time, fifteen, twenty years, maybe better, um, and I use it quite a bit. I just magnetized all the drivers the other day while I was sitting here. Um, here's some more hardware. These are wing uh, fastener bolts that go in from the inside of the fuselage for one of my extreme flight planes. Um, you always want to have those. That's the type of thing that you drop in the grass or you drop it and you kick it. You don't have a spare. Guess what? You're done for the day. That sucks. Um, and of course, you know, you got to have the Duck Dynasty Uncle Cy duck call. Uh, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that. So, and just random things. Some of this, some of this crap, like you know, magic marker stuff, it just kind of migrates into my box over over time when I'm working on things. Um, here's a prop reamer. This one's from Great Plains. It came in the little um, carrying case. So when you have to ream out a prop. You don't do it with a drill bit. You don't work a you know an oversized screwdriver in there or something. You do it the right way. You get a stepped reamer made for reaming props. <clears throat> Balance is critical on your prop, on your spinner, on your back plate. Your uh, you know a prop that's out of balance, especially when it's really out of balance, or a spinner back plate, a large spinner back plate. Most of them come from the factory, pretty good. You always want to check them, and that's where I showed you this before. This is a Dubro prop balancer. I'll do a video on this if you guys want to see how this works. I'm sure there's videos online, but um, this is for balancing just about anything. Um, I can balance the props for my RC boats, rims for cars, uh, but I use it mainly. 95% of its use is uh, to balance props, uh, spinners, back blades, etc. So, yeah, that's from... I can even show you the front. I'll show you what it looks like when you go in the hobby shop. Dubro True Spin Prop Balancer. And I've had a lot of them. The top flight one is pretty good. It kind of has two magnets and the shaft that the prop sits on floats between those two magnets. Um, I like this one the best. The one from top flight with the magnets that I just mentioned. That, that one's good too, but I like this one the best. It's very really versatile. And it's made by Dubro. It's built like a brick. Uh, you know what. All right, so here's the rest of that. Um, the bottom of the tray, it's just boring stuff. Exacto blades, exacto knives, um, a little pin vise for holding small drill bits, a five to enlarge a control horn. Um, for you know, if I, if I have to replace a control horn or something, binding, whatever, I got the drills and stuff that I need. And you can see these little Tamaya wrenches are showing up everywhere. So. Um, so a little car detailing brush. I use this just for uh, cleaning my plane off before I throw it in the car. If I've got dust and stuff around the servos, um, if there's any uh, servos mounted in the side of the fuselage back by the tail for the elevator or rudder, I like to just brush that off rather than let that dirt migrate into the end of the servo. Um, and then these back here, these are just uh, different tools for setting up, uh, doing front end work on the front of some of my RC cars. But never took them out of there they don't weigh anything so I just leave them in there so and we had a guy at the field who's flying a, an old Carl Goldberg Cessna Skylane and a Falcon but I um, can't remember the name of that one Falcon Junior Falcon Cox 049 and he didn't have a wrench and so I went home and I dug through from some of my stuff this one I think this is from when I was a kid this is from like the 70s threw it in the box because somebody needed one, they didn't have it, and he had to pack up his stuff and go home and try again next time. So that's the whole thing. It's just when I get a day off, I find some time, I want to go flying. Um, I make sure that I take the stuff that I'm going to need to the field or even the stuff that somebody else may need. It really sucks to go to the field and then you end up not flying or not flying as much um, or maybe even flying a little... Uh, dangerously because you, you don't have the exact part you need to get your plane set up the right way um, so if you do run across that best thing to do is just pack it up don't take chances we spend a lot of money and time 
building our planes, saving up for our planes, and, you know, all the stuff that goes in them to make them fly. And it would really, you know, it, it sucks to lose a plane. Because, and you're, I've heard people say before, damn, I knew it. I should have replaced that servo. It was acting funny or whatever. Take, take some extra servos. Take some tools when you get to the field. Go over your plane. You get a few flights in. You know, go over your plane, check out, check your uh, servo horns, make sure the screws are tight, make sure your clevises are tight, make sure the little pieces of fuel tubing that we put over our clevises to make sure they don't come off the horn, make sure they're still there, they didn't slide back or whatever. Um, it's just really good um, preventative maintenance. So that's what works for me, guys. I hope this video helped. And... Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I'll be doing more videos. I've got an FMS 1450 millimeter, 57 inch wingspan uh, V8 Mustang in the Tuskegee Airmen trim, the red tail. I'll be doing uh, an unboxing and getting into some of that stuff and I'll, I'll share that with you. Thanks for watching guys. See you at the field.